Hi everyone, this is Ishika this side and I welcome you all to the TechBit podcast. Today we are having Chandra Tamodaran with us. He's the CTO at Prelio. Me uh, thank you for joining us so we can first start from getting to know more about you. Absolutely Ishika, great to have uh, you know to be part of this uh, podcast. Um uh, thank you for having me here. Um so starting with uh, you know I've been um uh, Uh, you know i'm the cto for the firm uh, brillio and uh, we you know i've been with this firm since we started uh, so been through the journey uh, with the firm uh, through and through uh, you know brillio is you know about 8 years uh, in the making you know getting into our ninth year uh, primarily we are an enterprise uh, digital transformation company that's very focused on solving uh, you know you know industry specific problems for our customers we primarily work in four key verticals uh banking finance healthcare life sciences uh, uh you know high tech uh right and 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 basically what's what what as a firm we've been doing is uh you know looking at solving all of our digital transformation problems uh so that's that's uh, brillio and uh you know in my role as a cto um i'm very focused around driving um you know uh, innovation for our customers uh and basically elevating the overall engineering quotient of our firm that is amazing um can you tell us a bit about the founding members and the vision with which you started prelio with absolutely right so um you know as when we looked at um you know in in fact raj mamodia who is our ceo uh you know when he started off with this vision saying you know we need to be known as a company that's very very laser focused on doing one thing which is really uh you know you know working with our customers and solving their uh you know digital problems right and that basically meant you know we wanted to be known as a firm that's truly driving uh you know digital consulting services right and using the power of uh you know the the technology and we call them as a four superpowers uh which uh you know we used to basically solve all of these uh, different types of problems for customers right so raj created this vision of not doing 100 different things but we should be known for one thing uh, alone and that is digital transformation so that's how we started this firm uh and today if you see right uh you know in fact within you know few years of our existence you know in fact i would say 5 years of our existence um a lot of accolades and recognition started coming our way right because one was we wanted to do a walk the talk and um, you know whatever that you're seeing right in terms of whether being in the forester's leadership quadrant you know being in, in the an- analyst mentions not to mention you know a larger partnership with microsoft uh, you know aws and so forth we are in the leadership quadrant in all of these and all of this has happened you know very short duration of uh, you know under 8 years um and now we are part of the brain portfolio of companies and uh, you know we you know with brain being a majority stakeholder so it's been a brain child of raj and uh, with him you know we have been uh, you know i have i've been uh, you know honored to be part of this firm you know since the day we started so that's the you know the background uh and like i said right i think our vision is to continue to be a value provider for our um, customers uh, in the four segments that i talked about amazing uh can you tell us a bit more about the services that you are providing absolutely so uh you know brillio is a you know an enterprise uh, you know digital transformation company our our foundation lies around the four superpowers of technology which is predominantly uh, you know starts with cloud as being the underlying uh, you know for all of these primary transformations and kind of weaves around um, you know data iot and uh, uh, you know mobile and i would now say it's all immersive technologies right it's a combination of everything um as a, as a firm right i think the way i would say is you know when you look at today what your customers are looking for and this is across uh industry sectors you know the demographics are changing right your users uh, uh you know who are actually working with you know whether you take a banking solution or you talk about healthcare right you talk about high tech you talk about telco you know any of these areas i think what has changed is people are looking for connected and uh, in immersive experiences uh, and they're looking for you know orchestrating all of these experiences in a very smooth way and that's where your digital transformation starts to kick in right so our services that we offer uh, predominantly leads with uh you know experience and then kind of weaves in the elements of product engineering which is a big part of our uh portfolio of services and all of this then you know there's a whole bunch of data and uh, you know data sciences element that kind of kicks in right so data engineering and data sciences element so this becomes our you know uh, 
the set of services that we can uh, you know bring to bear and obviously all of this basically has this foundational element of infrastructure right so kind of lead with consulting kind of work across experiences product engineering uh, ai data sciences uh, data engineering and then the infrastructure right so this becomes our core portfolio of services uh, amazing so like you know when i whenever i hear the word uh, digital transformation probably the first thing that would actually come into my mind is going to be web3 and metaverse Yep. So what's your view about that what comes into your mind and do you think that it's actually trustable <laughs> Absolutely absolutely that's a great question right uh, so when i started talking about this whole connected and immersive experience um you know one of the things that we have started seeing is uh, the demographics are changing right um it's you know it's transition from now from millennials to your gen alphas uh, and all people you know 2000 and above on uh, gets into this category and um you know this whole uh, interesting thing about metaverse um has been uh you know it used to be in the realm of gaming right i think uh, you know it's been like couple of decades in the making you know headsets you know using uh, vr devices so on and so forth has always been in the realm of gaming uh but with facebook taking a very strategic approach last year and kind of rebranding themselves to become meta um there was a whole lot of interest from the enterprise customers um and inter- interestingly you know uh, uh you know we have been a, a you know a big proponent of uh, a, you know metaverse ourselves uh, in fact we are working with a couple of our customers one in fact in the regulated industry right one with a healthcare major in the US uh, and another commercial bank uh in the US as well So what I'm talking about is you know I think one uh, you know your your user public app, you know the buying patterns and the user personas are actually changing they connect they're moving towards a lot more connected personalized type of experiences and now you try to bring in um, you know the realm of immersive uh, experiences and that's where your VR devices like Oculus etc kind of kicks in uh what you start seeing now is uh people looking for uh these type of experiences and that's where uh you know i think uh, especially with some of the large uh both the retail uh, majors as well as some of the banks they actually started entering into the metaverse and they started setting up stores and uh you know lounges and access zones so on and so forth what's happened is now we're starting to see a lot more interest from the enterprise customers and that's a segment that we thrive in uh so the example that i was giving right we are working with a commercial bank we are working with a healthcare in actually setting up metaverse so what we will see uh is what started off as a trickle you know started off uh, you know in some bits and fashion will start becoming mainstream where a medium of entry you know into knowing customer is not just your web and mobile right i think it's now also the immersive uh devices so on and so forth right so that's the three realm that you will start seeing uh so that's where the metaverse is you know comes in and you know the uh, you know the, the boom that i'm uh, you know envisioning and seeing you know is, is going to be real uh, especially from a business side yeah one more question i had regarding this only so um what do you think how long is it's going to happen like how long it's going to you know go because i've seen a lot of technologies they come up but like after the hype is over people will tend to forget <laughs> about it Yeah but do you really think that actually everything is going to you know transfer into that world Absolutely right so today um you know like i said when 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 you know when you see you know brands luxury brands like for example Gucci Nike right uh, you look at uh, you know Burberry so on and so forth these people are actually setting up their retail stores you look at some of the uh, quick service restaurants like you know Wendy's Chipotle a whole bunch of uh, them right uh, McD for example all of them are basically trying to set up stores uh so the, you know not and it's not just a hype right the way i see this is um i see this as an opportunity for me to connect with the set of audience and that's where the bio person i was talking about these are people like for example all your gen alphas are people who are really connected all the time you know they are on games they are on uh, you know internet all the time these are the people who are actually in the metaverse today right these are people who are always uh, you know either playing games or and so forth so i'm targeting those segment of population to basically start you know being as an additional revenue channel so to say right so in that you know in that sense uh, yushka what i see is uh, the web3 blockchain which kind of is the underlying driver for your metaverse that is the technology that you will start to see the boom and hence you will see a lot more 
mainstream adoption right which means we need to have people to uh, you know have the skills to support it that's one dimension second more and more enterprise use cases are becoming real right um, on the metaverse so that's where i see uh, this not being a uh, hype uh, but this being something that you will start seeing becoming mainstream and that's where i said right like the way internet when it started off uh, and today web and mobile is very very common so the same way you will start seeing immersive experiences being common oculus is just one way there are so many other different devices but those will be the ways that you will start seeing uh, it coming uh, together yeah understandable um so one thing i had a question about what exactly makes brillo different from all the other companies which are working in this domain right now absolutely absolutely and i would i would kind of broaden the question to not just around the metaverse right just around our overall transformation and the way we have been doing it one i think uh, you know as a firm we have been uh, you know i think our, some of our core values primarily revolve around um, one you know customer obsession customer success right i think uh, customer is really what uh, you know helps us drive and thrive uh, our spirit of entrepreneurship right and kind of being consultative uh, kind of leading uh, sitting on the same side of the table working with them through the business problem putting our skin in the game uh, ensuring that you know what we are trying to build truly matters for their customers right uh, end of the day you know when customers are successful we are successful right i think taking that approach has truly helped us to one start differentiating right on one dimension a second big dimension that i would say uh, ishka that kind of helps us differentiate right i think how do we create value right and uh, value not as in you know value just for brillo right it's a joint partnership that we are trying to tell, go together and we are trying to solve something that you know helps them endear to their customers you know provide a greater experience you know you know drive down their overall tcos right help them to do things better do more with less on and so forth so in that dimension one of the value dimensions that we also bring in is bring in our set of accelerators right these are uh, you know baked industrialized set of uh, you know solutions and ips that we basically bring to bear and this is uh, you know value add that we provide to our customers as well right so net net when you see leading with consulting kind of providing these value based services and kind of putting our skin in the game in terms of saying you know i i you know have you know in fact more than 50% of our, our revenues are outcome driven right so kind of look at all of this combination that's really what kind of differentiates us from you know with the rest of the uh, you know people in the industry or the rest of the competition in the industry yeah makes sense like really like getting uh, the customers trust in you is probably the main factor that is going to help you out to build up your business absolutely Anyways, uh so uh, right now how are you exactly planning to expand your business great question so in you know i would say when a lot of companies were looking at uh, retrenching a lot of companies were trying to reduce their budgets on and so forth i think um, the pandemic has given a solid boost for us you know we have had huge tailwinds uh, we've grown at a tremendous pace uh, 2021 we are we had a great uh, you know i would say the first uh, two quarters in 2022 already uh, we have added you know you know significant amount of workforce into our teams um and we have well crossed the you know the 5000 mark um you know as of now uh we have started to expand our services you know offices beyond uh, what we already have so we have started into new regions we have started in mexico we have started in canada we are expanding our romania center uh, not to mention india being still our primary base where we are continuing to scale Uh, i think what you would see is as a firm right i think we are continuing to expand and 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 that can only happen right when we are able to kind of keep customers at true north and you know align and driver services around that so that's how we are um, so 2022 we expect to drive uh, additional growth as well uh what we have also done is uh, in the last um uh, 2021 late quarter we acquired two companies one a salesforce uh, company and then a cloud uh, native uh, company as well uh, standard and cetrus digital uh, so that's kind of additionally added to our uh one to our capabilities and to our overall workforce and to what we do what we can do for our customers so that's the vision that we continue to carry to be a true enterprise digital transformation partner for our customers and kind of provide uh, end to end value added services uh, for our uh, customers uh, great uh so what advice will you give to a person who is starting their career in this domain in specifically for a person who wants to start with their business yeah in specifically see i See absolutely I think um, what I would suggest for people who are starting the career 
Um, one of the things is uh, continue to be staying relevant, right? I think uh, I would say two things that I would say. One, be relevant in what you are, right? I think be aware of what's happening in the industry. Look at what is driving, you know, the next growth. Look for white spaces. I think so being relevant and situationally fluent, I think I would be two, uh, you know, attributes that I would say anybody should be. That could basically mean, you know, for a technologist or for a person who wants to pursue a track of engineering, you know, he needs to be aware of all the technology, so on and so forth. A person who wants to be a consultant needs to be aware of what the market trends are, industries, you know, which industry, what's happening within the industry, so on and so forth, right? So I would say these are two important attributes, being relevant and being situationally fluent, I think are going to be two important characteristics for not just for people who are just going to start the career, but even for people who have been in the system, uh, right? I would suggest that these are two important cat uh, you know, attributes uh, that is required. So I guess with this, we can wrap up today's session. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us and sharing your journey with us. And to all the listeners, stay tuned because we're going to come up with many more videos like this. Have a good day.